Hello everyone, this is Chromanim, and welcome back to Stalker Gamma. So, I've been spending some time with uh, new players recently, and uh, most of them, I find, have a lot of trouble with uh, crafting, replacing parts, fixing their weapon and gear, and uh, finding and fixing better items. Also, getting tools, and the whole system is kind of convoluted. So... I thought I uh, would try to make what I would call a comprehensive guide on um, basically crafting in general. And I will mark them down by chapters. I will leave um, marks for time uh, in, in the description down below. Of course, uh, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment with anything I might have gotten wrong, because I'm by no means an expert. And with anything that you feel I didn't explain properly or uh, I missed. If I missed anything, please drop a comment, tell me about it. Right, so um, let's start up with what you need to repair your guns. So first of all, this is my base here. Um, with all the containers that uh, have different items in, in here, I have managed to get my hands on a lot of broken down weapons, so we can uh, see how we can get to fix them. First of all, to be able to craft, you will need tools. So there are three types of tools, tool sets. There's basic tools, basic tools, allow you to repair and craft light armor kits and repair light armors. They allow you to repair handguns and historic weapons uh, with the actual kit, which I will open right now. Here we go. So this is the workbench. The basic kit would not allow me to touch any of my gear because uh, it's a little bit uh <laughs> my gear is a little bit too advanced but when you click on a part you usually see what it is needed what kind of toolkit it's is needed to to fix it up yeah, who are you kidding? Only Delta gets that kind but of back to the basic tools it also allows you to craft your one uh devices and uh equipment also, tier 1 upgrade kits. Now for this, we're gonna need recipes. Recipes you can actually buy from any mechanic. I'll take a quick run down here and I will show you. In Dead City, the mechanic is right here. And if you just talk to him, he should have these little... Um, this, these little uh, documents here, which cost a little bit. But uh, if you mouse over them, you can see what they allow you to craft. For example, this one allows you to craft tier 1 upgrades. This one allows you to craft tier 1 devices. And this one allows you to craft tier 1 um, items that you may need. Survival items, in this case. You don't need this, this, these to uh, upgrade weapons, but they are very good to upgrade the rest of your gear. After that, we have the advanced tools, which look like these. Um, they will allow you to craft medium armor and also heavy armor repair kits, although heavy armor repair kits will cost much more if you craft them with advanced tools instead of the expert ones. They will also allow you to repair rifles and some submachine guns that requ uh, require the type C weapon repair kit. They also allow you to craft to craft the actual repair kit. <laughs> and also tier two items, upgrades, and devices. For which, once again, you will need a recipe. And finally, the expert tools, which will allow you to craft pretty much anything else except exoskeletons. Uh, to which we will get a little bit later, but these will allow you to craft, to repair pretty much any type of weapon, allow you to craft any type of device, 
except uh, exoskeleton power sources. And they will also allow you to repair heavy armor and craft the heavy armor kit. Right, so I did not read any of my recipes just yet. How's your family doing? I'll leave these behind for later. So let's jump straight into them. That's how it looks. That's for the artifact melter, which I didn't want to access right now, but we'll get to it. So basically you just buy them, you double click them, and suddenly you have the recipes. Okay, so now I should be able to craft pretty much anything. Okay, so you get toolkits from statues, such as this one, but not really. <laughs> you get toolkits from yellow stashes. You have a chance for every yellow stash to spawn either a toolkit or a gunsmithing kit or a medical kit. We'll get to those a bit later. Uh, every mission has a chance to give you a stash. I'm not sure how much. I think it might be 50%. So that includes pretty much any type of mission, including the main story missions. You can also get stash by uh, looting dead bodies. Sometimes they just appear on your PDA. You will get a small mes message to the left. Uh, or by looting PDAs off of dead stalkers and reading them. Sometimes after decoding them, you can decode PDAs at mechanics and they may give you stashes. So for basic tools, uh, they usually drop in the southern zones. So great swamps, cordon, Darkscape, uh, Garbage, Agroprom, uh, Dark Valley, uh, basically all the way up uh, basic tools can drop. Advanced tools, I'm not sure they drop in the most southern zones, so in the Great Swamps and the Cordon, but I have seen them drop anywhere from Garbage upwards. As for the expert tools, they only drop north of army warehouses. That means Red Forest, Radar. Um, I'm not sure if they drop in Limansk, I don't remember. Uh, Jupiter, Zaton, Pripyat, uh, Outskirts. Outskirts actually has the best chance of dropping expert tools. So uh, remember, you've got a group of friendly loners and a group of friendly mercenaries here that you can do missions for. They are friendly with uh, pretty much everyone except Monolith, Sin, and uh, I think Bandits. Um, but if you're a bit too scared to go to outskirts, it is a very difficult area. You can just stay around Jupiter and Zaton and uh, farm Yanov Station and the Ecologist um, Lab and the Skadovsk or the Merc Base over here. Right, so that's how you get the tools. Now let's talk about the crafting table. As you saw, you can actually open the workbench from your inventory, but in order to actually craft, you need parts. If you open the workbench from your inventory, you actually have to have the parts on you to be able to, ca to craft. But a lot of the times, uh, it's really annoying to carry all the parts, to check what you need, get it from the stash, craft, put them back in the stash. So, there's the workbench. Which, you can just store everything, all the parts here, and the tools. And it has a nice little button called Use Workshop. You can just click this, and there we go we have our crafting station. And if we check out now, I was trying to craft a bear detector and it actually takes everything we have in the stash. So um, that, that goes for upgrades as well and for repair items. Right, so I think that those are the basics. Excuse the fighting out there. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> right. To craft a crafting table, all you need to do is to go to hideout furniture. 
you need some wood and metal, which you can get from disassembling shovels, hammers, and other items. And there's the portable workshop right here. It needs 12 wooden parts, 12 met metallic scraps, and you can craft it. And from your inventory, place it down wherever you want. I suggest a safe place because while you're crafting, you don't really want to get backstabbed. And the little boxes I had are metal boxes. They each take 12 as well. They're very good for storage storage because they do have 400 max, uh, max weight. Okay, with that, let's move on. Okay, weapons. So, normally you will start with probably one main weapon, which will be in very good condition. But the weapons you get from the start are not usually the best. And you will definitely want to upgrade in time. So, what you will probably find early game is maybe something like a Mosin, maybe a shotgun. Let's see, is this the one I'm looking for? No, this is too advanced. And there's a controller outside, by the way. <laughs> right, uh, we'll just use the Mosin for, for a historic weapon. And I would also like to take uh, maybe this. Yes, this is also a historic or a type B weapon. So let's take the SKS as well. Right. So early game. And we can take a head and gun just to. Perfect. So early game. What you want to do, you will not have access to tools immediately, which means you can fix your weapons, but not by going to the workshop. Because normally it would be very easy, you just go to the workshop, you select your weapon, you click what you want to replace, and if you have the part, you can just put it on. But, uh, early game you will not have access to tools. As it takes missions and it's uh, kind of luck based, if you get tools or you don't, you won't be able to get them. So, if you need a weapon quickly, what you should do is look for weapons, just ignore all weapons except weapons that have a good condition barrel. Uh, they are very nicely color coded in the game. If you mouse over them, you can see uh, everything that's green is easily repairable. Right, sorry about that. Had to go deal with the controller. Okay, so what you are looking for is a weapon with a good barrel. The barrel is the only thing that you cannot replace without a actual weapon repair kit. All the other parts are pretty easily replaceable. So we have a dirty, uh, a dirty barrel, but it's in good condition. And for condition, everything, you can check the part conditions down here if you go to details. Everything, about 60%, can be maintained. All the other parts, as you can see, are below 60% and they can't actually be fixed by normal means. So, how do we fix a gun? Well, you take other weapons. For example, I'm going to take, uh, let's say, this Raptor. And you can just right click and field strip the part you want. For example, if I want a bolt, from the Raptor, I can just remove the bolt. You can actually select remove all and it will take everything off except the barrel. If you want to actually get the barrel, you will need to use a multi-tool on it, like this. And now we have a barrel and all the other parts, but it does destroy the weapon. This is also a good way to recover the upgrades you put on the weapon. Right. But in this case, we don't need the barrel. I'll just put everything back in its place. But we do need all the other parts. So what you can do is uh, if you have a lot of parts like me in the stash, you can just mouse over the weapon. And as you can see on the left, it actually highlights all the parts that are usable on the weapon. 
So from here, I can click on the part, I can see what I need, I'll take this 88% and I'm just going to put it on. You can just drag and drop it. Right, and then we can grab a carrier and whatever this is, a bolt, and we're still missing a part. It may take uh, closing up and reopening your inventory for the weapon to upgrade. Uh, we're still missing a gas system. But, as a main idea, if we had a gas system and we put it on, uh, this would be a good working condition weapon. All we would need is maybe to maintain it, which we can do by, again, mousing over, and you can see all the things that uh, can uh, repair weapon condition. And also this thing. This is a weapon cleaning kit. We're going to grab a couple. And I'll teach you how to maintain your weapons. So there are two different conditions here. You've got the part conditions. If a part's too broken down, you have a very high chance uh, for the weapon to jam. And then you have the actual weapon condition. Um, which I think the lower it is, the faster your parts break. Though I'm not 100% sure and I uh, couldn't find an exact explanation. So if anyone knows, drop a comment. Right, but with that, um, with that cleaning kit, we can actually right click on the weapon. We can select maintain parts. And here we are, we have clean barrel and clean trigger mechanism. Yeah, who are you kidding? And now, as you can see, practice. both the trigger mechanism and the barrel are at 99%, which is the highest you can clean a weapon to. Uh, cleaning uh, this way also improves the weapon condition a little bit. Uh, so it's 40% now and we could actually use uh, some oil, for example, this lubricant and we can go and actually fix the gun from here. We can just hit repair or we can use other additives to increase the repair. Uh, and there we go. We have a almost 100% gun, but we're still missing a part. So what do we do if we're missing a part and we can't actually replace it? We just don't have it. Well, for the barrel, we would go to the workshop and if we had the barrel, we would replace it. But if we really want the gun and there's no way to actually find the part or it takes too long, we can use a repair kit. Now these, you already need them to actually repair the gun. So if I go to the actual gun, you can see here we need a Type B. Now these are sometimes sold by the mechanic. You can actually give uh, give tools to mechanics to upgrade them, and they will sell better and better toolkits and parts. Or we can actually craft them. As you can see, it's right here, and we need steel wool, grooming kits, guns, um, gun care spray lubricant, and weapon cleaning kit type B, which are all sold by the mechanic or can be found around the world or in stashes. So with this, we could actually repair the gun, just as I said, from the stash. But it also has another special feature, which is if we grab one and we go to the weapon, again, we can maintain parts and we can actually replace a whole part. Bam! We have a fresh weapon ready to use. It's an SKS. Early game, this thing is actually amazing. Right. For the Mosin, everything's broken down. I don't think I even have a barrel. If we had a barrel, we already know we have a historic weapon kit. So we could just uh, replace it just like with the SKS. We could replace the parts that... Uh, we need to and whatever else is needed again with the historic weapon kit we can just uh, replace the barrel uh, maintain parts and so on for the pistols it's exactly the same thing this is these are the basics for basically or the guns so pistol exactly the same thing you can just use the workshop the only difference is pistols take a different tool set they require 
a type A repair toolkit. So here we go, replace this, replace that, we actually have a barrel and bam, full pistol. Pistols have fewer parts than the rifles or the, the snipers or the shotguns, uh, which means they are also much easier to repair with simply a weapon kit. We can just hit maintain parts and here we go, with one weapon kit we fix the whole gun. And we have a pistol, right? Nice. The only problem with using a, a repair kit like I did is the fact that uh, replacing the um, um, the components with the repair kit does not increase the base condition. And that's kind of a problem because uh, if you're at 20% weapon condition, uh, there's very few ways to bring the condition back. So yeah, we could use a uh, weapon repair kit, which as you can see, it requires a base condition of 10% for it to repair. But these are expensive. Other than that, we could use at 20% a weapon cleaning kit to repair. Basically, we don't maintain, but we actually right click the kit, use repair, and we can actually repair the gun. Uh, but usually I prefer getting uh, parts that are a little bit damaged because that way I can right click, maintain and repairing a, maintaining a part like this actually brings the condition up and that way you can simply use a lubricant which is much cheaper to repair the rest of the gun. Okay, let's put these back. Right, so, um, let me see, I think we went over the basics, there is one more thing I could, uh, I could go over, and that's replacing individual parts, uh, fixing individual parts. So, let's say you're in the middle of the road, you have your gun, one of the parts breaks down, you just couldn't maintain it enough, for example, um, on my RD 9x39, as you can see, we have a part that's at 87% the bolt carrier. Or maybe um, you you simply want to fix it up before, before you don't have a maintenance kit, you can't afford one. So what you can do is uh, go to details for the specific part and it will show you compatible repair kits. These are the things that you can use to actually fix the part itself. So we could grab a file. It needs a... It's not usable below item condition level 60. But for this one, it's 88. So we can grab a file. We can use the file. And here is the part. And as you can see, it fully fixes it. It fixes it by 25%, which is pretty amazing. So now that it's fixed, we can just drag it back on our gun. Now, replacing parts like this without the workshop will actually reduce the main condition of the gun. Not the part condition, but the overall gun condition. So remember that. Okay, um, you can also use gun oils to, to fix the main weapon conditions. Right. Did I go over everything? Yes, there is one more thing we could look after. So we checked on the actual guns. Let's talk knives. Knives and tools can be fixed with sharpening stone sets. You can buy these off the mechanic. Knives are pretty expensive and they do lose durability when you use them and also um, when you loot mutants for skins and uh, meats. So you can actually use a sharpening stone set to fix up your knife and also your multi-tool. A multi-tool is 5,000 rubles and you use it pretty much every time you disassemble um, a weapon or an armor. So make sure to keep that multi-tool up because um, a knife sharpening stone set uh, costs like 2,000 rubles. So 
and it has three or four uses which means uh, you save a lot of money by actually fixing your gear before it breaks down and you have to buy another another one right next up let's talk armor so for armor there are as i told you three different uh, armor types which require different uh, armor repair kits there's light armor medium armor and heavy armor so let's grab some um this gas mask is light armor uh this uh is this this is medium armor you can check what type of armor it is by right clicking and then um uh simply checking the details this is heavy armor so you can see what compatible workshop kits they have and also what can repair them now armor is much easier than guns if uh if you have armor that's over 60 percent you can simply fix it with um, armor repair parts so let's mouse over this for example and you can see it highlights all our armor repair kits and actually 65 percent is the minimum to be able to easily fix it with a heavy sewing kit which uh, you can actually buy from a mechanic or you can craft yourself not in the stash but in the workshop you can actually craft it yourself here it is it does uh, take a few materials it's not cheap but if you find yourself a piece of heavy armor early game over 65 percent you're set for the whole game just make sure it doesn't go below 65 percent make sure you fix your armor but if you don't, if you have an armor like I do, which is 22%, this requires a medium armor kit. So, what we can do is we can go to repair kits, we can craft our medium armor kit. It requires advanced tools. So, uh, oh, one thing I forgot about tools. You can actually craft a set of advanced tools by using five sets of basic tools. And basic tools you can also get, sorry for the for the cut in the middle, you can also get basic tools. There is a food vendor here, and if you give him 20 uh, pips, which is 20 swigs of Nemirov vodka, so it equates roughly to seven bottles, he will give you a set of basic um, basic tools. Right, coming back to the armors. So, fixing an armor is much easier. You don't have to have parts at 100%. You can loot armor parts, you, you'll find them everywhere. Or you can simply disassemble armors to get them. But, here, what we're interested, the the main condition will be an average of all these five parts that we can replace some armors have even more parts uh, others have fewer but what we want with armor is we want to increase the condition to higher than 65 percent so we can actually fix it ourselves right so uh, if we up this we're already at 50 percent and we can also replace this 64 and Bam, 76. We hit repair. And from here, we can simply use uh, armor repair kits, even glue tubes. Like, we don't even need anything else. We just use the glue tube and bam, our armor is 100%. This works with all armors. You just have to get it up to 65%. Or if you have if you're really desperate for armor you can even use your actual armor repair kit to fix it if it's above 50. so we could have just pulled this up to 50 percent and then used our medium repair kit 
by dragging it in our inventory and right click use and we would have fixed that armor so armor is very very easy to fix uh, you can also fix individual parts for the armor just like with the guns all you have to do is go to the specific part go to details and it will show you what type of uh, armor kit you need to fix it but I honestly never found myself in in uh, a position where I need to do that. Um, right. Finally, let's talk what everyone loves in this game. Exosuits. Let's grab this. And I can put it on. I actually spent three minutes in a toxic anomaly trying to break this down so I can fix it for you guys. <laughs> Okay, so for the exosuits, these uh, you cannot buy the repair kits anywhere. The exosuits actually need an exo repair kit, and they also need the exoskeleton uh, recipe. Now, these you can't buy off of anyone, but they do drop off of uh, very high level stalkers. So think north of the Red Forest. So, outskirts, Pripyat, Jupiter, and Zaton. For me, it usually drops off of Monolith or UNISG. Sometimes even Sin. But both these parts drop off of uh, high-level stalkers. Also, from what I remember, you need to be at least rank master, which you can check in statistics. So, that's how you get them. It usually takes a long time to farm them up, but they are well worth it. So let's read our exoskeleton. And uh, yeah, once you've got the exoskeleton repair kit, it's basically the same thing as with any other armor. This is at 48%. All we have to do is replace parts until it gets to 65%, and then we can actually fix it ourselves or I can just replace all the parts and it's 91% should be usable. Same with the exo helmet. It requires an exosuit uh, repair kit. So here we go, bam, 100%. Now, for, um, for armors, condition works a little bit differently than with guns. Uh, gun's main condition affects the inner parts, and the inner parts affects your jam, jam chance. The barrels uh, affect your damage. For armor, uh, the worse condition the armor is in, the worse the resistances on that armor are. So, if you hit left control, you can actually see the, the resistances changing on my armor. So hitting left control will show you the max resistances that the armor can get. That is at max condition. So if you find yourself seeing an armor that's very low condition and you see these uh, resistances, which are just horrible, hit left control and you will see the armor at its full potential without upgrades, of course. Okay. Um, I think think that was it for armors. We're, we're getting through these pretty quick. Okay, next up, devices and equipment. Right, so, early on, whoops, wrong button. Early on, you start with a basic PDA. You start with a basic detector and uh, maybe not even a flashlight. But, if you have basic tools, you can make a headlamp. All you need is two broken flashlights, a box of resistors, capacitors, copper wire, and BAM! Headlamp! And it's already in our inventory, we just have to equip it. And... It works! Alright, so... Uh, devices are pretty straightforward. They just, you click on them, they tell you what you need, they tell you what type of toolkit you need, and at that point, you can just make them. 
Now I'm out of copper wires, but uh, you get the main idea. Um, we want to upgrade our detector. There we go. We need the base and it will upgrade to bear. Now from bear detector, we have two choices. We either go grizzly detector, which um, allows you to see it with night vision. It, you can see the screen with night vision. It will show you the direction the artifact is in. Or we can go for the Velis, which actually shows you the anomalies and the artifacts um, on a little screen, but you can't use it with night vision. The cool thing about the Velis, it needs expert tools and it upgrades into the Svarog detector, which is the best detector out there. And it actually looks like this. It shows both artifacts and anomalies on that little screen. Okay. You can also craft other devices and equipment. You can make uh, artifact application modules and so on. You can upgrade your PDA. The second level will show you where the corpses of the enemies you killed are, that way you don't lose out on loot, and level 3 will also show you friendly stalkers on the map. Equipment, the most important thing in equipment is upgrading the backpack. You start off with a normal backpack which you can upgrade into a hunter's kit, which will give you bonuses when looting mutants. It's good to have a hunter's kit on you, even if you don't have it equipped, just for that bonus. Because it works even if you have it just in your inventory. Or you can upgrade into a camping backpack, which further upgrades into a travel backpack, which upgrades into a combat backpack with advanced tools, and once you reach expert, you get to the tourist backpack, which is the biggest one. Uh, for carry weight. Now, exoskeletons also grant you a lot of carry weight. And here's a thing we did not talk about with exoskeletons. They need power sources. So you can make jury rigged exoskeleton power supplies. Or if you have, let me see where those are. We need these. And I think I left the power supply. Here we go. If you have a mil spec power supply, it's even better. You can actually see the properties on it has more capacity, it consumes power, power way less. Um, and if you go to the ecologists, uh, the professor will sell you uh, recipes for upgraded power source sources, which you can see right here in the equipment. So if you have a um, battery was it no if you have a generator no a battery if you have a battery you need a surge suppressor as well which is right here uh and a mil spec power supply you can actually make an experimental power source which is twice as good when it comes to consumption also uh some other ones have some special abilities when you double tap shift you can either sprint or uh, explode all around you, or uh, I forgot what the stronghold did. Right. Uh, other than that, you've got things that you can attach to your belt, uh, which give various bonuses, like carry weight, stamina recovery, and so on. You can check this out yourself, or also Kevlar plates. Um... You can also build binoculars, um, uh, food crafting uh, stoves, gas stoves, and of course, multi-tools. You can craft your own multi-tools, which is amazing. We already talked about the repair toolkits. The last thing is uh, upgrades. So, applying upgrades is actually very easy. If you have the upgrades on hand, let's say I want to upgrade an armor. I'll grab some upgrades randomly. I'll even grab some of these uh, big ones. You actually don't need in the newest patch, let me actually do this from the inventory to show you what I mean. 
you actually don't need any armor repair kits or uh, do you no upgrades can simply be applied as long as you can access a um a workbench you can even access the mechanics workbench for free every mechanic has a workbench right next to him if you have the upgrade you can simply apply it there we go it doesn't matter what level as long as you have the prerequisites for it you can apply the upgrade so here we have a fully upgraded armor just like that um so remember this as long as you have the upgrade on hand you can simply apply them right then and there yeah maybe you don't have the upgrades on hand they don't drop very often so you will surely find yourself without uh with your armor is only partially upgraded or even not upgraded at all and the upgrades are pretty big they for some armors they increase ballistic resistance by 10 to 15 percent uh they give more rad resistance especially on helmets so you want those upgrades uh and for the exosuit there is this upgrade called servo motor boosters this allows you to sprint with an exosuit. You can't sprint with it otherwise, which makes the exosuit useless unless you can sprint. So you definitely need this upgrade. But maybe you didn't find the prerequisite upgrade kits. So what you do is you go back to crafting, you go to upgrade parts, and here are all the types of upgrades that you could ever wish for. You just need to craft them. And they each have their own requirements depending on the level of upgrade that it is. It's the same for weapons. Next up, crafting ammo. So, you will oftentimes find yourself with um, low ammo for one reason or another. Maybe you're like me and you're a merc right now. I'm a merc, as you can see. <laughs> and you use a lot of NATO rounds. You'll end up without the NATO rounds in the end. I mean, you'll use them up, right? Maybe you need AP, maybe you need HP. You want to fight mutants with your assault rifle. But uh, because you went and you killed duty, you have a lot of these, which are 545. Five. Five. These are for washo packed um, rifles. So what we do is we just disassemble all of these. And if you click details, you can see what it disassembles into. And this is also what's required to build them. So we just disassemble all of these. They also weigh less when disassembled. Um, although you won't always get um, all the parts so some bullets may some parts for the bullets you disassembled may be lost but still we don't need warshow packed bullets right we also need a do we have one actually oh my one second i think i forgot my gunsmithing kit somewhere else much better here it is gunsmithing tools these also drop out of stashes. Same for the drug making kit, which we will talk about in a few minutes. So if you have gunsmithing tools, you can actually create ammo in the workshop. So you hit craft, we go to ammo, and here's all the ammunition in the game. <laughs> and we can check on what we need for 556 FMJ. We need ARFMJ small bore rifle bullets, propellant, green propellant, and AR casings. Um, we did check the details for the 545, and it's the exact same components. So we disassembled the 545 bullets, and we can reassemble them into 556 bullets. This works for pretty much any type of... Um, bullet we need uh, shotgun bullets maybe maybe we picked up some um, some barricada which is uh, a pretty pretty big uh, it's it's 23 by 75 that's a pretty big shotgun 
But early game, you probably won't find a shotgun that shoots 20 feet free by 75. You can just disassemble the barricada and reassemble them into 12 gauge shotgun. No problem. Same for um, pistol bullets. Same for maybe your late game and you need 338 Lapua for your deer hunter or your Barrett. Uh, you just disassemble some. Uh, 762 by 54 and um, they give rifle bullets armor piercing and guess what rifle bullets armor piercing and that's it for ammo it's easy enough except gauss ammo which also require a flash and batteries gauss ammo is very rare uh if you find some it may be worth just selling it. It's very expensive. Sell it at a mechanic. He will pay a lot for it. But late game, when you want to use the Gauss, maybe you'll think it wasn't that good of an idea. Maybe you should have stockpiled that Gauss. Because late game, you might need it. You can also make explosives, uh, under barrel grenades, uh, even... Uh, rocket RPG warheads. So, yeah, and improvised explosives in case you need them. But yeah, that's that's it for the ammo. And now, let's move on to medical. For medical, you will need that drug making kit I just talked about. Hey! And funny, funny, the stash bug for me for a second. Oh, you need the drug making kit. You know and then you can just go to the workshop or open the drug making kit straight up and you go to medical and again very straightforward the game tells you what you need to craft a certain drug sometimes you need a lesser drug sometimes you just need vodka <laughs> and you can even craft um you can interchange different types of vodkas one for the other at the loss, of course. So, medical, quick and easy. You just uh, check what you need and you make it. Simple as that. Next up, we're getting into something a bit more advanced, which is food. So, let me see here. Yeah, here we go. So I'm just gonna grab all of these. You don't need the workshop to craft food. You do need a lot of vodka, a lot of purified water, and a lot of meat. You don't need these types of parts, you just need the meaty bits. Yeah. You also need fuel. So there's two types of uh, cooking kits. There's the basic field cooking kit, which... Uh, Do I not have a gas balloon on me? Oh, it's empty. Okay, we're back and we have charcoal. So we can now cook with the basic field cooking kit, which you can find pretty much anywhere. It's also cheap to buy. You can either make basic uh, food out of meat. It tells you what you need. Basically all flammables, in this case uh, charcoal. Um, it's one charge of charcoal, so it will eat one out of six charcoal that I have. And also what type of meat it needs. And of course, you can just mouse over and see what it does. I never recommend making basic food like this. Because it, uh, it's irradiated. Um... Also, it doesn't fill you up as good as other fee other uh, foods. But um, if you check the ones with the yellow teardrop, these are also irradiated, but they actually fill you much better. For example, boar chops recover 767 calories, which is pretty good. That that should get you out of yellow hunger, no problem. Now, I myself don't use the field cooking kit almost at all. 
I consider it inferior and it is. For that we have the gas stove. You can actually make it in the workshop from the is it equipment? Yes. So you can actually make it out of a gas balloon, a uh, five cooking kit charges and some scraps. Or you can buy it, although it's pretty expensive. This one only uses kerosene, but it allows you to cook green food, which actually gives you buffs. And they last a lot, 3,800 seconds. That's uh, basically uh, calculating. That's basically an hour, right? Pretty much. So an hour of 18% rad resist and stamina recovery, plus they feed you, it's amazing. And if you get the masculine meal, which is out made out of chimera meat and white vodka, it also increases your carry weight by 12 kilos, which is amazing. You need you need to um, you need to survive uh, chemical anomalies. Make a snork hand. You need to survive uh, a controller attack. Psy sucker goulash, or pseudo dog chops if you don't have psy, psy sucker meat. So they give very good um, buffs that last a very long time. And you just hit cook, and it will use a charge of your fuel. It will use whatever meat and secondary item you need. And here's the food right here. Lurker chops is what we made. And that's it for cooking. I think you can also do it in the world at some stoves. Uh, for example, I do have a uh, gas stove right here that we can interact with and you can also use it as a stash for food parts, mutant parts, I think. Um, yeah, that's that's it with food. I highly recommend you make your own food. That way, if you kill mutants, you the, the money you would make by selling the actual mutant meat, you will lose just by buying food. So by actually cooking your own food, you can you can uh, avoid that cost. And even selling food, food is um, actually pretty expensive. Lurker chops four thousand a piece, which is not bad. All right. Finally, we get into artifacts and artifact melding. So for that, you need an artifact melter. This also drops out of stashes. We can grab that. And if we select Empower Artifacts, uh, excuse me, if we select Fuse Artifacts, <laughs> I'll get over the Empower one as well. Uh, you can actually go to the Artifacts and you can make your own artifacts out of different ones. For example, we need a um, battery. Or was it a generator? Hmm. Whatever. We need a battery to make our exosuit uh, power supply. Well, we only need a generator and an electron. And it will use uh, one charge of artifact melter. It will fuse these two artifacts into a new artifact, basically a battery, which will have the average uh, condition of these two artifacts used. It's as simple as that. Now, in order to improve the condition of, uh, of an artifact, uh, what we need to do is, um, unfortunately, all my artifacts are at full condition because I added them to the game. But um, what you would do is you would hit fuse artifacts. Nope, sorry. Um, empower artifacts. And you can use two artifacts of the same kind. So if you want to empower a generator, you need to use another generator to empower it with. It will consume one of the artifacts for the other. And also a charge of your melter. Now to refill your, mel your melter, you simply need to drop artifacts into it. It will consume the artifact and it will 
refill a few pips of your artifact melter. Take your girlfriend out. And I believe that's all there is to it. Or was it the other way around? Oh, you drag the melter over the artifact. There you go. So, yeah, that's that's it with the artifacts. Pretty straightforward. Uh, there are some very powerful artifacts uh, in the late game. I will give you an example of an artifact I usually look for and try to always use. This is the full empty. And at 100%, uh, it will give you 5% ballistic, 6% rupture, 5% explosive for one second. Oh, oh would you look at that? Uh, somehow the quality got reduced. So I can actually show you how to empower artifacts. <laughs> Alright, so we have this. Let me take them out of the box. Good enough. Empower artifacts. We select one. And we can use other ones to improve this one. And it's already full condition, 99%. And at full condition, a full empty will give you 24% rupture, 11% psychic, 21% ballistic and explosive, also impact resistance, which is amazing. It will reduce your stamina recovery and uh, your elemental resistances. But uh, in the late game, if you're not actively hunting through anomalies, it is an amazing artifact. Right. So, I hope we covered all. Oh yes, in order to uh, fuse artifacts, we actually need the recipes which we actually get from the doctor, uh, from the ecologists. You just talk to the trader there. Um, Professor Sakharov is in uh, Yantar. He's probably the first one you'll have access to. And you can just buy the recipes off of him. Again, there are three levels of uh, artifact recipes, each one more expensive than the previous one. Um, but yeah, that's mainly it. And uh, perfect, we're gonna end on an emission. So this was a guide. I think I covered pretty much everything. I hope this is really useful to you and helps you survive the zone a little better. This has been Chromanim, and as always, I will see you all next time.